Ever since I first played Pokemon Stadium on the N64 back in the millennium, I dreamt of a proper full contact Pokemon fighting game. Something solid and scrappy, while I was physically in control of what the Pokemon was doing and where it was moving. 2004's GameCube release Pokemon Colosseum was pretty good with its intriguing story and mechanics and the finger clicking soundtrack but the battle mode was missing that true competitive fighting element and of course an online option. Fast forward to July 2015 and Bandai Namco released a Pokemon Cross with Tekken fighting game on the arcade scene, met with initial excitement and then murmurings of financial disappointment, as cabinets were pulled from arcade centres in Japan due to a lack of profitability, mainly due to the fact that one credit in some cases can last up to 45 minutes, or so says Destructoid. The Wii U version on the other hand has so far seen nothing but success entering the charts as the highest selling game in Japan during its debut week. But does Pokemon Tournament live up to its hype? Now that I've had a fair enough amount of time with the game both online and off, I'm ready to give my verdict. Pokemon Tournament, or Pokemon, however you want to say it, is set in a new region called Ferrum, a place where Pokemon and people seem to be linked by something called Synergy, where they can control their captured Pokemon's action and movements by a device called the Basil AR. But don't you be thinking about that lore too deeply. The game has four core gameplay modes, single player where you can practice against CPUs, the Ferrum League, an arcade style single player mode, local battles where you play against your friends and of course online multiplayer. The actual battles feature two fighting perspectives, changing the strategy of the game altogether. All fights start in a wide angle mode, making it easier to move around the field and dodge attacks. And then when a heavy attack is dealt, the perspective will shift to a more traditional side-on view, seen in the likes of fighting games like Street Fighter, Tekken and Mortal Kombat. Pokemon Tournament ignores the elemental weakness system we've all come to know and love, making it totally possible for Charizard to shrug off a Hydro Pump Blast and Gengar to take physical hits. Instead, the game features its own attack triangle, which you'll need to memorise if you want to have any hope of holding your own online. Counter attacks beat normal attacks, standard attack beats grab attacks, but then grab attacks of course beat counters. Got it? Good. If you're new to the fighting game scene, you'll be glad to hear that getting to grips with the game is pretty simple. The inputs for each attack aren't difficult to learn, mostly consisting of a combination of directional buttons on the D-pad and X, A, B and Y. You can also pick up combo patterns reasonably quickly with a handy run through of each move and combo in the tutorial dojo, but as with most fighting games, how well you perform really comes down to great timing and knowing exactly when to perform each killer move and then what move works best next. There's also an in-game battle advisor called Nia, who is rather fond of shouting out supposedly handy tips throughout fights. If you want a little guidance here and there but simply can't handle Nia's constant assault on your eardrums, then her Japanese voice could be a viable option, and personally doesn't make me want to smash my head repeatedly against my Wii U gamepad quite so much. Additionally, you can change the frequency of Nia's advice, although even when you do opt for none, she still somehow finds ways of piping up regardless. As you play each match, your Pokemon will build up its burst mode. Each Pokemon has a special burst attack, which plays out a short cutscene, and then if you land the attack correctly, without the other Pokemon dodging or blocking, you perform a special move which deals a massive amount of damage, sometimes even halving your HP meter instantly. When burst mode is activated, all your attacks will be that much stronger, making it a powerful tool, especially in those last scrappy moments of battle. At the start of the match, you will also be given a choice of support Pokemon, who after the gauge is full, grant either stat bars with attacks or replenish your HP, which is also rather handy and adds another tactical element to the game. Speaking of actual Pokemon in the game, one of the most disappointing things about Pokemon Tournament is the tiny roster of Pokemon available to battle as. There are 16 main characters, which while sounds a lot, out of those 16, two are taken up by Mewtwo, Standard and Shadow, and another two host normal Pikachu and the rather cute but random Pikachu Libre. As much as I love the little wrestling themed electric mouse, I do wish Bandai Namco and the Pokemon Company would have offered a wider range of fighters, instead of duplicating those already in the roster. And if you're wondering about how that rather puzzling option Chandelier plays, the floating ghost Chandelier is actually strangely enough pretty damn OP, but fun to fight with and play against at the same time. Who would have guessed it? If you want to unlock everything the game has to offer, including all the support Pokemon, you're going to have to scrap your way through the slightly boring and long-winded Ferrum League. While this single-player mode does have a story, it's rather on the light side, with Shadow Mewtwo occasionally popping up to cause mischief between rank leader matches. Overall, I was pretty underwhelmed by the single-player modes in Pokemon Tournament, and it felt like it really could have offered so much more by fleshing out the story sequences a little, and cranking out that difficulty ever so slightly. 
while the single player mode and Feral League are pretty tame and will take the average fighter no time at all to get through, online is where things really heat up, where you'll be spending most of your time, especially with the fast paced and exhilarating ranked battles, although even supposedly friendly matches had me on the edge of my seat. I literally think I hold my breath in suspense throughout the majority of my ranked matches, as the high intensity of burst mode really means you can never be quite sure how a match will play out right down to the last few desperate seconds. If you're the kind of person who prefers single player matches and a chunky story, rather than quick adrenaline fueled scuffles online, you might be better off with one of Pokemon's older fighting spin offs, like the aforementioned Pokemon Colosseum, one of my personal old favourites. Pokemon Tournament does feature a local play mode where one player uses the Wii U gamepad and the other either the Pro Controller, Classic Controller Pro, or exclusive Hori Pad, which came available with the game in some packages that you might or might not have picked up. Unfortunately, this does drop the frame rate to 30 FPS, which isn't game breaking but obviously not ideal. If you're fussed about frame rate, you can of course hook up the LAN cable and two we use for a smoother local play. While Pokémon Tournament does have its snagging points like the rather small true pair of fighters and lean content outside of online mode, it also has a fair few of its own surprises. One of my favourite elements of Pokémon Tournament is its move and combo dojo, an area in the tutorial mode which helps you get to grips in real depth with each Pokémon character running through their full moveset and learning the basics of each of their unique playstyles. As someone who hasn't really bossed a fighting game since the 2D days of Street Fighter 2 on the SNES and the old school Mortal Kombat titles, this was a very much a welcome addition to the game and a feature I'm sure will help close the gap between newbies and those trying to hone their skills with a new Pokemon. Another nice feature to Pokemon Torn is its avatar customization tools, which are pretty damn extensive. By playing matches you earn Poker Gold, the in-game currency, which can buy you outfits, new hairstyles and colours, and different battle ARs and accessories. By customising your avatar, you can really make a character which truly represents you, to an extent. Pokemon Sun and Moon, take note. Visually, Pokemon Tournament is rather impressive, with HD Pokemon models really bringing each fighter to life, from the bristles on the back of Pikachu, the flowing purples locks on Suicune, to the creepy oiled muscles on every Machamp, no really. Battlefields are interesting, with detailed backgrounds whilst not feeling distracting at any point. My personal favourite was the Magikarp Festival, which felt oh so very Japanese and rather quaint, with everyone's favourite beloved orange carp flopping all about everywhere. Once again, I would have liked to have seen a few more stages to add a bit more variety to the battles, but hey, you can't win them all. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you find it handy. If you perhaps like this video, then make sure you hit that like button. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye!